Shalom everyone, my name is Tina. Welcome to Hebraic Awakening and we're going to do another chit chat slash a slight teaching. Uh, we have officially entered into Rosh Kodesh Adar, our uh, new month. And if you haven't checked out Prophetic Whirlwind's Prophetic Perspective with Minister Aduwame, you are missing out. I am going to share that on my community tab because it is very important that we learn how to follow our biblical calendar that the Most High has given us so that we can be on the same page as the Most High. He has things planned for us monthly and he tells us what those plans are if we meet him at the appointed times like we are supposed to and things wouldn't be so surprising to us if we will follow the prophetic perspective remember the more deems they are rehearsals yet they are prophetic the most high has set an appointment to meet with us to rehearse with us the things that he has planned for each and every one of us so please watch that so you can gain the correct insight for your month. I wanted to share with you all a resource that I have been using to help me to understand the Brit Hadashah or the Renewed Covenant, and it is the HebrewGospels.com. And I've been studying it because for me, it's time to go back and to revisit what the Mashiach has instructed us to do. And I wanted to read um, the Gospels, the writings through an Hebraic lens. And so I've always believed that the renewed uh, covenant was written originally in the Hebrew. I've always believed that. However, today I wanted to share with you a Hebrew translation of the book of Matthew and Matthew's Yahoo, okay? Because especially if you're a new believer, it is going to make so much sense, right? And they have taken the time to translate the words back into the Hebrew. And we know that anything that man put his hands on is not going to be 100% correct. However, I like the way that some of the scriptures are reading it just helps me to connect, you know, the Renew Covenant, you know, with our culture and our language. There's so many uh, teachings against the Renew Covenant. However, there is a Hebrew manuscript that was found. But, you know, people don't want to talk about that because now we don't believe in Hebrew. Now we don't believe in a Paleo Hebrew. We, we're going to study ourselves right out of the truth as i posted a while ago um knowledge eating the fruit of knowledge from that tree that we wasn't supposed to you see why the most high said don't eat from that tree don't eat the fruit from that tree it's been making us silly ever since we want to know everything that we're not supposed to know eating the fruit of knowledge and he asked adam adam not to do that <laughs> And Kawhi or Eve would have did it anyway. And he followed behind her. And we've been in trouble ever since. Oh my goodness. But I digress. So for me, I want to introduce, especially to the new um, believers, the Hebrew Gospels. For those of you that have been walking for a little while, please read it. Because it's going to help your loved ones who may not be awakened who are struggling um, with the Hebrew understanding of the New Testament or the Renewed Covenant, this will truly help them. So we're going to read a few scriptures so you can see how it reads differently from the Greek. All right, so we're going to read from Matthew 5, verse 5, okay? And I have my phone. Um, and let's read from the NIV. You can read from any version you have. But blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Okay? Now we're going to go to the 
Hebraic translation of the same book and the same verse. All right, so it is going to read All right, I just had it. Okay, blessed are the resty ones for they will inherit the earth. Okay, so that sounds way better than blessed are the meek. Now I have a better understanding because the resty ones are those that rest in the obedience to the most high. And we know that the most high wants our obedience it is way better than sacrifice and so you find that rest in shalom because you're not toiling you're not trying to think about it you're not trying to dissect the instructions that he has given you you are resting knowing that you are walking by what your immuna the evidence of faith because he about to show you something as you step out in this evidence once you step the evidence is going to show forth that that is what he told you to do but you got to take that step and so as you take that step and this evidence of faith produces itself you can rest and now you become the resting one and this is how you inherit your inheritance by learning how to rest in obedience look i just i've been really enjoying this breakdown now, for our loved ones who are having a hard time with us, you know, following Torah because they think we're following, you know, the old ancient way that is just obsolete. <laughs> um, and Torah is nothing but instructions, you know, have them to read Matthew in the Hebrew, okay, in, or from the Hebraic translation because check this out, um, Matthew 5. Let's go to verse um, 17. And we're going to read it in the Hebrew because you, 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 you're you going to know what it says in the um, other translation. Moreover, Yeshua Mashiach said to his Talmudim, Do not think that I came to throw down the Torah and the prophets. On the contrary, I came to confirm. I say unto you in truth, that not one word will be diminished from the Torah, that it would not be performed until the end of the world. So all of that, you know, I came to fulfill, you know, people still play around with those English words, but when you translate it straight from the Hebrew, you get <laughs> the straight up truth. He didn't come to throw down the Torah. He came to confirm it. And our people have been killing the prophets because they have been speaking the Torah since the beginning. And so I just love this version. Um, there's another one that really, really um, just lit my fire when I heard this one. All right, we're going to go stay in Matthew 5, and we're going to go to verse 13. And it happened furthermore that Yeshua Mashiach said unto his Talmudim, You are the instruction of the world, but the instruction is cut off by them who are not saved. And nothing else is fit except to cast them to the street and to trample them. So this is talking about being the, the salt. You know, and I know we, you know, have great sermons on the salt. But again, this sounds so much better and clearer. That we are the instructions to the world. But the instructions have been trampled on. We've been cast out, trampled on, thrown in the street. The instructions ain't fit for nothing. And when I read that, I was like, wow. You know, and that brings me to my point. And tying in Rosh Kodesh in this point. 
many of us are getting caught up in the end of the world what's going on what's going to happen da 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 the fall of babylon and i mean <laughs> people are getting really really caught up and i said this this last shabbat um during our shabbat service that many of us are sitting up here we are planning physically we got our closets stocked up because i do we got our bug out bags. We got all of that. But spiritually, when the stuff actually hits the fan, <laughs> we're going to be quaking and shaking. And, you know, I believe that what's coming is not meant for us. It is meant for the Gentiles. So why am I shaking and quaking? I'm preparing because, like my ancestor Yosef, who prepared his people, I'm going to take that wisdom and do like he did because the Most High gave him that wisdom and that instruction. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to prepare. But I know that what we are going to see and what is to come, I don't have nothing to do with me. It got everything to do with those that are not saved, those that have not found salvation through Yahshua. Now, we believe in Yahshua over here. If you don't, you might as well, you know, click off the video and go on about your business. And with that being said, we as believers, okay, the Hamashiach gave us instructions. He said, you are the instruction to the world. Okay, but if the instructions ain't fit for nothing and it's cast out in the street, what, what good are you? We are the light. We can't be hiding under a bushel, right? We can't hide. And a lot of us are burying our heads in the sand, so to speak. And we prepare for the end. But I like the parable that the Hamashiach told his Tamadim and the people when he said the parable about the businessman. Y'all remember that parable? And he said, occupy till I come because he gave them 10 talents. And you seen 10 and that's a governmental word, a governmental order. Okay. So I know a lot of people use that for business and that's, that's right. You know, but there's so many levels to understanding one scripture. Okay. It's actually four, but we're not going to go into that. There's different levels of understanding scripture. So that has been on my mind. Occupied till I come. So he, he gave them a parable where they could understand it in the things that were around them. So he gave them a business parable. But what he is saying is, I gave you a governmental order. And I expect when I return that you multiply that. That talent, that gift that's inside of you, that I expect when you come back, that you're going to give me some fruit. And we are so busy preparing for the end that we have stopped occupying. And that's a military term in itself, to take possession of. And we're not taking possession and, and seizing the kingdom and bringing the heavenly kingdom down to the earth realm like we're supposed to. We're too busy hiding. We too busy being pumped with fear. And I'm not telling you to prepare. I'm not telling you not to be aware because I am aware. But honey, what's coming? It ain't for me. I'm going to make sure I stay in the sukkah. As Minister Adawami says, I'm, hi I'm hiding in the sukkah. And the sukkah is nothing more than the presence of the Most High. That's where I'm going to be. And inside that sukkah is his more deems. Inside that sukkah is his instructions. So that's where I'm going to be. And I'm going to put my ear to the mouth of the Most High and listen and have discernment. And when he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. But I sure ain't fit to be afraid and be watching end time videos every two seconds. I, I'm not. I'm not finna do that. And I hate that word finna. That's why I use it. <laughs> because it's ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not finna do that. I am going to get in the sukkah, stay in the presence, put my ear to the mouth of the Most High, and listen intensely at his instructions. Because I sit at the feet of the Hamashiach, 
The Hamashiach is the Torah, the living, breathing clarification of the Torah. So that's what I'm being. And I want those that have an ear to hear, I want you to understand that. And we don't have time to be fearful and afraid for what's coming. And you're afraid for your loved ones. Pray, get in the sukkah. If you are following the Moedims and Rosh Kodesh, the head of your month, then you will be declaring over your family and you should start seeing your family begin to pay attention. They have their own journey. So we, we can't spend our time worried about how come my family is not listening? How come they not do it? They have their own journey with the Most High. Either they're going to get in before, during, or after. That's not your business. Your business is to be the light. Your business is to, is to be the instruction, like the Hamashiach said, and to use your talents and your gifts to bring fruit back to the Father. So what are you doing while you're occupying, while you stockpiling, while you watching every conspiracy theory video? <laughs> It is nothing wrong with being aware. I'm going to say that one more time. It's nothing wrong with being aware. But a lot of us is doing a whole lot of nothing. And a lot of us is being judgmental and getting on these social media sites. And we worried about everybody else but us. We picking out different people, actors, singers, athletes, and you want them to walk up right before the most high. That's not your business. Stay out of people's business. And get into your own business and occupy and produce fruit. And that's the problem. A lot of us ain't got nothing to do. And so we sit up on social media nitpicking everybody. If you had something to do, you wouldn't have time to do that. Because I sure don't have time to know what anybody else is doing. Not Riri, not Fifi, not Beyonce, not nobody. What? What? Honey, I have five children and a husband. That's a whole lot right there. But I am called to occupy. I have gifts. I have talents. And if, if I don't produce no fruit, guess what he going to do? Cut that whole tree down. Boo, you of no use to me. Mm -mm. And I do not want to hear that from the Father. So I want to encourage you all twofold to... Read the Hebrew Gospels. Listen to the instruction of the Hamashiach, which is the living, breathing Torah, the clarification of Torah, and to produce fruit. Learn your Moedims, including the head of the month, Rosh Kodesh, and quit sitting up on social sites, getting all your information off of YouTube and stuff. Get into this word. And put your ear to the mouth of the Most High. He got something to tell you. But you too busy listening to everybody else. And it's okay, y'all. It's okay to listen to your teachers. Because you listening to me. What's not okay is that that's all you do. And a lot of us ain't, ain't picking up the word. We, we don't even know the first five commandments. Without looking it up on Google. And that... We got to do better, but I don't want us to get caught up in preparing for the end. Every generation thought it was the end, by the way. Every generation thought it was the end. Even the Talmudim who was with the Hamashiach thought it was the end. So, y'all, the end will be when it will be. You better occupy until he comes. So read the Hebrew Gospels because they've translated, I think, some other books and writings, but read it. And it's going to make more sense to you. And remember to occupy and produce fruit until the Messiah returns. Until the next video, shalom, everyone.